Hi, Susan here. I'm going to be doing a new project today, not involving my scroll saw, but my band saw. I've got this big chunk of poplar that's one inch by three inch. And it's got these really cool colors of um, different colors of browns and some blues in here. I thought it would be really cool to make a spoon. So I'll be using my band saw and my um, carving tools, hand carving tools, and then I have a couple sanders that I'll be using to finish it up. This is just a simple spoon pattern that I'll be using. And I think this one was from Steve Good, but you can make your own and just draw it right on the wood. So I'm going to be tracing the outside of this on this side. I'm hoping you can see this quite well. I drew the front part of the spoon pattern on the top, and I put some guidelines where the spoon begins and where the spoon part ends, and then when the handle ends down here. And on the side, I drew where the scoop is going to be and where I want the handle to be and what I want it to look like. Because I'll be cutting this part out first, taping it back together, and then cutting the top part out. If you are using a scrap piece of wood, you need to make sure that it is smooth on the side that's going to be down on your bandsaw when you're cutting the side part out and fairly smooth on the bottom when you're cutting the top part out. So I've raised it just about three inches up. Make sure you have your push stick for the end here so you don't get your hands in the way. I sped up some of these videos to save time. Just make sure when you're feeding the material through the blade it is at a nice even and steady pace. Don't try to rush it or push the blade. I cut this in, so I have four different pieces and I need to tape them all together so I can cut the top part. So that's your next step. And I just use simple clear packing tape. All taped together and I'm ready to cut out the front part of the spoon. I may have to retape while cutting this because once I cut through the side, then the other side will be loose and I'll want to retape it to secure that. Clear packing tape is a nice, cheap, easy way to secure your pieces all together for cutting. Retaping. And here you have my last pass through on the bandsaw. Let's take this apart and see what we have. There, we've got a basic shell to work with. And a lot easier doing it this way instead of by hand. Beavercraft makes a spoon carving kit for left-handers, which is what I am. And this is my left-handed one. The other two tools that came with this can be left or right-handed. But I will always be starting with my spoon scoop first in case I make a mistake and then I have to start over and cut another one. I am new to this. So um, I'm sure there's a lot of better ways to be carving it, but I have it on a non-slip mat. And I'm just going to start scraping away the middle part and start getting something concave. And I'm doing it towards me. A lot of people hold it on their bodies and go towards them that way, but I think this is a little safer this way for me. Well, this is taking a really long time, and if I cannot speed it up a little bit, I may start sanding the hole out. This is a hardwood. I mean, it's poplar, so it's not super hard, but it's dry. A lot of people will spoon carve on um, fresh wood that has not been dried, and it cuts a lot easier. Being that this is my first time using this spoon knife, I'm sure as I continue doing spoons, I will get better at it and find more efficient 
ways of handling the knife. I made this round sander in another video and I'm going to be smoothing out the inside. This is a 12 inch grinder that I bought and I fashioned a couple of different sized sleeves that I can put on the end here. This is from Judy Gale Roberts Studio that she uses on her intarsia. So I'm going to be using this to finish my spoon. With my experience in sanding, I don't think you can have enough sanding equipment. There is always a better way of sanding something. Now even with this, I fashioned a, a little bit of a, a plastic box around it and it's not real good for long types of material but it's great for small little items. So I was able to do a lot more on the bowl part of this knife and then I used other sanding equipment that got closer and better for the handle. As you can see by this right here I went back to my drill press to sand the handle. Now that I have the shape the way that I like it. It's time to perfect it with hand sanding and going down or up in grits to make it smoother and smoother. I have gone all the way down to 400 grit. Now what I need to do is wipe off all the excess sawdust and wet it down so that it will raise the grain and I can do my last sanding before oiling. I got this wet to raise the grain and I sanded it down once again with 400 grit sandpaper. If you don't think that's enough, give it another try. Wet it down again, let it dry and sand it again until you get that smoothness that you want. Now I have a concoction here that I've made of mineral oil and just a couple flakes of beeswax. Heated it very lightly on the stove and mixed it together and then I have this to apply directly to my spoon. This is food safe and I like to use my hands to do this so I make sure to get into all the all the bends and the turns and all of that and I just love this part. This is when it comes alive and it's so pretty. Now normally you would be putting three to four coats on this and more is fine too and then you would want to treat it like every six months or so with the same type. You don't have to have beeswax on this, it just helps seal it a little bit better. I'm going to wipe off the excess and then let it sit. Look how pretty that is. I just love this. I have never used poplar before but it's got a lot of different, I mean it's got these lines are just natural in here. It's got a lot of different colors and it's, I think it's so pretty. Most of the time I use cherry which I like a lot too but this time I decided to try something a little bit different like poplar and most of my other things that I make are spatulas. They're a lot easier than spoons. Spoons I think are the most difficult because of the concave part of the spoon. And there you go. Well part of this video came out a little bit unfocused. I apologize for that. I have no idea what happened. But I have my completed spoon. And this was a lot of fun. I think the next time I am going to be using green wood when I'm carving out the spoon because I think it would be a lot easier to carve out the bowl part of it. I've made spatulas before and that's been out of kiln dried wood, uh, cherry woods, and that's fine. But for the spoon, I think I'll do the green wood next time. If you like what you see, please subscribe to my channel and click that like button. Hey, thanks for watching.